Welcome to TFP, the Theater Faux Podcast, the place to be for drama teachers, drama students, and theater educators everywhere. I am Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Hello, I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. This is episode 134. You can find any links for this episode at the show notes, theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 134. So today I am talking to a student director. I uh, was invited and I went to see a, a run through, a rehearsal of a play of mine, Sensor Bleep. And the group was getting ready to take it to competition the next week. And even though they were struggling a little, they were, you know, trying to put everything together, the lines and the blocking, and even though, you know, things weren't as put together as they, they could be, I was amazed at the student director. Uh, she was a force. Uh, she was in control. Um, she knew what she wanted. And um, not only that, uh, she was able to to get this group. Um, they didn't fight about the issues they were having. They collaborated together. And I knew as I was watching that I really wanted to talk to her and get her on the podcast. And so I did. Let's get to it. I am here and I am talking to Amelia Trimble. And uh, how are you, Amelia? I'm good. You're I'm good. good. Yeah, I'm good too. Thank you. Good. And um, the reason that we are talking is you uh, directed one of my plays. Yes. Which one did you direct? Uh, Censored Bleep. Censored Bleep. Yes. And this was for a uh, local festival. Yes, Sears Festival. Sears Festival. And this was your. This was the first play that you have ever directed. It's yes, first play. Now your teacher uh, kind of put you up to it. Sort yes. of, sort of, maybe. Yes, it was pushed you into it with both pretty hands. Pretty random how it happened. Yeah, how, how did how did how did it come about? Um, so I act as well, and I wanted to be the lead in this play, mm -hmm. but certain things are happening with my health that I didn't think I could do the lead. Okay. Um, and originally Fioka was directing it, and I was just going to do a small part, and then I actually missed one of the rehearsals and I got a text from my friend saying that Fioka made me full director because he's also making me co-director then I got full director <laughs> and I was like oh okay sure and it didn't really hit me until like you know he wasn't there and then everyone was looking at me going what do we do <laughs> like, oh okay yeah I guess I am like the leader have you ever did you have you done any directing before before um, this no no I've acted a lot. In, so like, what do you think made him see uh, a director in you? I'm bossy. <laughs> <laughs> I have pretty clear like images of what I like and what I want. And I have uh, good spatial awareness. And I guess last year when I was the lead in the Sears Festival play that we did, I was very like wanted things to be a certain way. And I always have very like big ideas and creative and so... And I'm a leader. Like, it's pretty clear when I'm in a group. I yeah. I tend to lead. Yeah. And he knows that. The thing that I noticed when I came and watched your show was that that's the one thing that you were not afraid of in any way. Was mm -hmm. like, okay, this isn't working. We need to move you. We need to do yeah. this. And I think that's a really good, that's a good skill for um, any director to have. Yeah. You know, student or yeah. not. So when that first rehearsal happened and everyone was sort of looking at you, yeah. how did you dive? What did you, how did you approach it? Um, well, I just, I'd read over the play a couple times and, you know, I already had had ideas. So I set out my ideas as far as, you know, I thought would be good for the play. And then I just asked their ideas because all in all, it was an ensemble piece. Mm -hmm. And because it's hard to look at a person, like a peer, sometimes as like a leader. So I tried to just include everyone and try not to be super bossy, although I was <laughs> at some points. But yeah, and um, I don't know, I just talked to them. And that was yeah. really like a big thing, I think, was yeah. just actually including everyone. and But also having that line where it's like, but 
together, I, you know, do make a lot of the decisions. How do you find that line? <sighs> um, it's kind of, it's, it's a hard line to find, I guess. Um, but just when people would say their idea and then I go, okay, how about we do this instead? And then they're like, yeah, okay. And just talking, like... Communicating. Yes, yeah, communication is a big thing. Yeah, instead of I'm going to tell you what to do, yeah, it's like let's do this yes. and see how it goes. Yes, exactly. And so that was really what it was. Is a lot of it, you know. Sometimes I did go, okay, do this, but a lot of times would be like, do you feel comfortable doing this, or how about try this? And if that doesn't work, you can keep doing this. But you know, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Big. <laughs> what was your biggest challenge? biggest challenge um one of them was getting people to show up and having yeah. a full cast and uh another challenge was just helping people really communicate what they mean when they're saying certain things like with the one character justin yes he had a problem with really opening up to us yes and that's a big thing and i get it like it was his first play that he was you know um you know, like a lead-in kind of thing. Yeah. And so he was kind of shy and awkward about it. But, you know, it was... It's a challenge to get a person who's new with acting to really jump into it and really get it. Yeah. So that was a challenge. And just repeating things and, you know, going over things and over and over and over. Yeah. And also just keeping my cool. <laughs> 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 when... Uh, Things weren't going right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big thing. So how did you deal with someone like Justin? Like, how did you... What choices did you make to try and draw him out? Um, well, there were some points where I said, okay, how about we go to this side of the room, you yeah. rehearse your lines just to me, and, you know, I can help, right? And I would, you know, he'd say everything, and then I'd go, okay, at this point, do this and this and this, he'd do it again. And so that's like a big thing. And, and for a while he didn't memorize his lines and stuff. But I think it was also at one point I did center him out. And I was like, okay, go do this in front of all of us. And he was uncomfortable with that. But after a while, like we all kind of ended up being like a family at the end. So yeah. it was really good. And it, it was hard at the beginning because a lot of people, we just didn't know each other. Really. Right. And, you know, you're expected to just work with each other. But you don't really know anyone. So I did actually do like a trust thing kind of yeah you know I was like okay how about we have like one lunch where we just sit around and we can have our lunch and we sit in a circle and we just talk and like tell each other about each other and I actually helped a lot well it's all because it is all about trust yeah isn't it, is. it? like if when you're on stage if you mess up you're trusting your you know fellow actor to help you out and that's a big thing is you need to trust everyone that's you're with on stage it's just like sports really yeah you know I think that's the biggest thing that if anyone can learn that when you're in the middle of something and someone messes up a line, mm -hmm. to not stand there and go, well, I'm just going to wait till they do the right thing. Yeah, because in all, you're a team, yeah. right? And I think it's hard for some people, they look at acting and they're just like, well, you're just on your own with acting. Like, yeah. no, you have to work together. And also, like, improvise. Yes. <laughs> it's a big thing when you're on stage. I know I have problems, you know, even still with the improvising, but you just have to go along with it. Like, you just keep going with it. Somebody doesn't forget or forgets doing something, then you just do it. Or, yeah. you know, you hint <laughs> in a different way. Kick them under the table. Yeah. Well, that, and that's where, no, actually, and that's where the more you know, who your character is and where your story is, exactly. you can kind of, if you're not exactly sure, it's like, well, this is the moment when and I'm supposed yeah. to be this. So, and that's why a lot of big things like Randy's moment at the end. Yes. When, you know, she was doing that for a long time, it was really just, she'd say it and then it'd be gone. And I had to like, you know, work with it because it was like, you know, this is your moment. This is the moment where Randy is coming out of yeah. being like this quiet, like kind of bleep bleep girl and, and, you know, she's never really, like, part of everything. And the way I had us, she's at the end and stuff like that. And so at the end, when she's talking to Mandy, it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, 
seems like a genuine person and not like a crazy plea plea girl, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I really made her like emphasize on, you know, talking to the audience and talking to Mandy at the same time and just the way she put her body out on stage, right? And, yeah. You know, I told her like, you know, the plea plea girls are very like, you know, tense and really like in a certain position, right? Yeah. And so I said, relax. When you're saying this, you're relaxing. And I, like, you know, I made her like, so it's so, you know, she's doing her line and slowly she relaxes and then at the end when she really realizes it I made there like a pause and just have that moment where she's looking at the audience and she's you know Mandy's looking at her and there's this connection kind of thing like that's mm -hmm. the way I saw it you know and just she walks up and you know saying all this and then she snaps back into being a bleep bleep girl and she's like oh. like <laughs> okay I had my moment I have to go back yeah yes yeah did you ever have uh, times when you're trying to get across your vision you're trying to get across something and it's just it's hitting a brick wall yeah it was yeah my vision with um you know having people come out of the garbage and stuff like that yeah it did somewhat come together trying to communicate certain things that i see myself and that other people don't see it yeah it's so hard because it's like i can picture it so clear and you just can't explain it the proper way that people are gonna understand yeah that was definitely one thing and just you know i wanted it to be like a dramatic thing when they come in the garbage right especially when the reporter pops up yeah right it's got to be like don't call her garbage kind of thing and you know i want to make that really dramatic like you know garbage flies and then you know and especially with uh justin that was really hard to work with just his you know enthusiasm yeah and also like you know when he screams it's like scream <laughs> you're scared <laughs> <laughs> this would be the point <laughs> yeah and yeah so and working with like falling and stuff like that was also a big thing so yeah. you fall on stage you gotta make that fall and when the reporter falls, she's interrupting the smart mouth. So she got to fall, and that's like, you know, for a while it was really hard because, you know, a smart mouth finishes the line. But I'm like, okay, guys, like, it's an interruption. Like, you know, he's not finished his thought, but you interrupt his thought, right? Mm -hmm. So that was also. So how did you feel? Because I saw you, you had one rehearsal. How yeah. many rehearsals did you have after I saw you before you performed in competition? Hmm. Um, well... We ended up really buckling down. Yeah. And uh, I had a Facebook page, and I just said, I was like, guys, we need to start being committed. And, yeah. you know, they realized a guy was getting stressed out. And when I get stressed out, they no, don't mess with her. Kind of <laughs> so I got everyone, and I, you know, go in the hallway, go, go down to the drama room. And, like, I got everyone down there, and I gave them the like, little speech that, you know, we have... We had a week. Yep. And that's when we really buckled down. And I was like, okay, we have a week every day, you know? I, I was really chill about, you know, having Fridays off and having every other, you know, and, you know, people telling me, just let me know if you can't come and I can work around it. But at that point, I was like, no, everyone, no excuse. I don't care. Like, you got to come because it's a week and just give me a week of your time and then you can have the rest yep. of the time to be on your own. And I didn't think that got through people. But we managed to get it together, and we managed to get some good stage time too. Yeah, which helped a lot. It's different, eh? It's so it different is. when you're in your little little classroom than when you actually mm -hmm. have to traver figure out how long it takes to. Yeah, and it's also just you know say like how long it takes to walk across stage. Yep. And how long it takes for the person to get over there. And, yep. And you know different lines where it's like okay, well they're saying this line, be moving. Yes. Or, you know, like different things like that. When you're on stage, you have this big stage to work with. And so it changes it everything. Like, really I, uh, I, uh, I was talking to a director, and then I was watching his show, and he had just like these, these long, long blackout changes, and he yeah. just went, My classroom is this big, and the theater was this big, and it just, it, you just don't, it's hard. Uh, yeah, that was a problem uh, at the festival, yes. actually was the blackouts yeah it was a problem <laughs> it was, didn't really work out well um there was miscommunication with the cues and stuff like that and so um we actually the one blackout w made it work because yeah. tandy carly she 
made it work where we were all standing on stage and this is really long blackout and she kind of went up and she was like um, excuse me yeah, nice. and she saved it and everyone nice. laughed and it felt like okay maybe that was supposed to happen right? yes because in all the play it was the audience was involved yes so that's, that's all you want man exactly that's, all, that's exactly you what you want you gotta keep the audience involved and that's every time I talk to them about it is you know they kind of forgot that you can talk to the audience they're yeah. there we know they're there yes. that wall's broken well it's in, in that play yeah it they're not only there they're part of the play exactly they're part of the experience exactly so that was probably one of the things that was hard to get across too. Yeah. Was talk to the audience. Don't have to turn and talk to the person on stage. You're talking to the audience as well. And I think I think that's one thing that I said is to you guys is that they're your ultimate scene partner. Exactly. It's the audience. It's not it's not the person on stage. It's mm -hmm. it's the person in the audience who's yeah. part of the whole thing. Yeah. So how did you so, so segues nicely into you got to festival yes and so what was that experience like to see your baby basically yeah really it was it was pretty actually incredible yeah um it was very proud moment yeah especially after we performed it was i was just really proud of everyone and seeing them like it was a moment where it was like almost made me want to cry just of happiness because I was so proud yeah and I was so proud that people that I had my doubts about proved me wrong and that is honestly like the best feeling sure especially when you work so hard like I worked really hard yeah on it. so you know for it to come together and for you know say Tandy to do what she did that was amazing I was like yes exactly what you needed to do um Trevor, the guy who played Smart Mouth, yes. he just went from here to here so when we performed. And I was watching him and I was going, <laughs> yes. Where was this in rehearsal? Yes. Where was this? Yeah. And, I mean, even the guy who played Poet, Curtis, he blew me away yep. as well. He just got on stage and he just, you know, he looked comfortable. He you know got up and he did his poems he memorized them that was really good yeah and just like you know he was really good and his british accent everyone commented on it they were all <laughs> like is he actually british <laughs> like no no and i think that was really good and i wanted to make sure that everyone knew they did a good job everyone. yeah because they did you know and but it was also kind of a step back because i was also on stage yeah because i acted in it as well so that was kind of like when something went wrong, I'm like standing there and I'm just like, okay, keep your cool. Like, <laughs> <don't>, like, <laughs> Do not freak out. Do not freak out. Yep, yep. Kind of thing. And especially with the cues. That's a major thing. Being a director is patience. Like, yes. It's a huge thing with not only your actors, but especially when you're getting ready to go on stage with the lighting, it takes time. And it's all out of your control, it isn't is. it? It you know? really is. And I tried explaining that. It was really frustrating because we're trying to get our lights together and everyone is getting frustrated. And they're all like, can we rehearse? Can we rehearse? I'm like, no, we need to get this down. So that was hard, but yeah. we made it through. And I think it was good all in all it was yes. good so yes and then you fun. ended up with a a student directing award yeah the mac dodge award which is kind of cool it's kind of cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of big and yes it's huge awesome. i know i saw it from the office it's mm -hmm. like this mammoth thing yeah when i got called up at the ceremony i actually couldn't carry it off stage <laughs> i was wearing like heels and a dress and everything and i walk up and i'm standing there and he kind of pulls me in and he's just like it's really heavy i don't think you can carry this and I went, oh, okay. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I can't carry that. And no. Then, you know, I walked off. And you know what was funny is they actually called me Lindsay Price. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it's like, uh uh. I was like, she wrote the play. I was like, I I'm wish. I'm the director. <laughs> I'm the director. Yeah, so I had to correct oh, that. Oh, man. They called up Lindsay Price and I went, no. No, not, no. And so I went up and she was just like, oh, it's actually Amelia. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> Lindsay wrote the play. <laughs> it was funny, but yeah. Okay, so that's your first experience. Yes. Warts and all. Do you mm -hmm. want to do it again? I would love to do it again. So what would you change next time? Hmm. Next time I would maybe not act in it. Yeah. 
I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to pursue, because I'm on the fence with directing and acting. Right. I love being on stage. I love the attention I get after I'm on yes. stage. And so that, that would be a hard thing to leave. Um, but I also love directing and, you know, having a say in what's going on on stage. And yeah. it was, even if I didn't, it was a learning experience in itself. Yeah. And I have that, you know, even to put on my resume. Yeah, absolutely. Responsibility of being a director and yeah, just the experience. It was awesome and yeah. I loved it. And whether I go into acting or whether I do more directing, it, it's something you know, that you did yeah. that you can, you can play forward in exactly. whatever you do. Exactly. What would you like to learn more about? If you were going to do it, what's something that you thought you wish you knew more about? Um, maybe uh, placing things on stage. Like Staging. the set. Oh, the set stuff. Yes. Yeah, the set stuff. I'd like to learn more about visual, like, you know, where it's going to go and what's going to be best for people to, like, move around and stuff. Because we actually had a bit of a comment from... What we did was we had garbage on each side of the stage. Yes. Which is, you know. That was important. It, that you it, that, that was something you really wanted. Like you yes, wanted it yeah. all over. Yeah. yeah. And so we had that. But then, you know, she kind of made this image on a piece of paper that looked so much better. And I was like, I wish I could have imagined that. Yeah. Right? And so, I don't know, just setting things on stage and everything like that. I'd probably like to learn more about um than just, you know, learning how to properly communicate with people, I guess, <laughs> and like, how to make people do exactly what I want. <laughs> yeah, without pushing it. Yes, yes. Without making it, seem, without, with making it seem like it's their idea. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Which, it was good. It worked out. Yeah. And we all had a say, and it was good, and I, actually, we got the comment by the adjudicator, too, uh, after, was that, you know, she could see how well we worked together. Yeah. And like... That really came down to us being close yes. as a cast. And it makes a huge difference in the play. I think it does, too. I, the whole idea that... Because um, when I saw you, when, when I saw your rehearsal and there was mm -hmm. a lot of struggle, yeah. you were, as a group, you were working together to solve a problem. Yes. You weren't fighting, and there wasn't like, oh, she, nah, nah, nah. Like, she's saying yeah. this, and he's saying this. No. It was, it was very... Went. It was very communicative. That also helped as well that there were different personalities that yeah. we had. We all had our own kind of personalities and our own creativeness, and we just worked together well. And, you know, like, they knew I was yeah. the boss. They knew that I like things the way I like it. And so they, I think they also learned to communicate with me. Yeah, <laughs> so sure, why good. not? Yeah. Well, and that means that, but that's part of it too, because sometimes... Um, you get a director who nobody feels comfortable talking to or yes. going to because yeah. it's the sort of the tyrant. I really tried to make it so like if you can't make it to practice, don't have a problem coming up to me in the hallway and saying you can't come. Yeah, you know, I think for a little bit it was intimidating. Yeah, um, to come up to me and say that, but I was like, seriously, like I'm a nice person. You can come <laughs> up and talk to me. I yeah. swear. Yeah. So yeah, that's a big thing. Is just being comfortable with everyone, and I think so, and being comfortable with each other, and you know, for a lot of people, it was their first time being yeah. on stage, and so that was a big thing. Was just, you know, I've been on stage before, and so that actually gave me like quite an advantage. Yeah, being a director as well, like just I knew what it's like to be on stage. I put myself in their position. Yes, being on stage, being an actress myself, I can you know relate and I can go okay well when you're on stage though you know it's better to place yourself like this certain way because it's just more comfortable yeah. and you know do things that are comfortable for you and yeah. obviously there's going to be certain things that you do you're really uncomfortable with doing but as an actor an actress like you just need to do it like, yeah that's the way it needs to be <laughs> like you know to really yeah. get it across I think that's another really great you know tip like if you want to direct i think it's really important to have acted mm -hmm. to have tried to write a play you know to, the Try. whole thing about <laughs> noting yeah the notion of you saying i want to know how the set works yeah you know like because that's going to just make your your picture and honestly i did some tech stuff too when yeah we were yeah putting up lights and everything i was like i want to learn how to put up lights right yes that was a big thing and just learning like the board and stuff like that 
I like to learn different things. And yeah. if, okay, tech, maybe not my thing. It isn't. <laughs> so I know that, okay? And I know I can act, do acting. I know I can do directing. So I've got those two things that kind of go yeah. together. And it really is. And I think it all it all just circles right back down to that whole communication thing. Yeah. Like, how are you going to talk to your lighting technician Yeah. if you've never worked a board? Exactly. And, I, you know, I can say, okay, we'll move that button and then see what that does, right? Yeah. Like, if I just know what I'm talking about, like, yeah. Mr. Fioka knows. Yeah. He knows. And that helps him. Yeah. Because he knows he can just go over to the board and go, okay, well, look at that. See, like, that. do that. Put that down, right? Yeah. I want to do, I want to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as we as we wrap up here, so what advice would you give to other um, students who are in a position to uh, direct uh, at their school? Just go for it. Like, <laughs> really know how you're feeling. One, mm-hmm. know your ideas. Um, know that it's not everyone's going to listen to you, and not everyone is going to get what you're saying. And you really just have to stick with your opinions and your you know, thoughts and visions and just go for it. <laughs> so really, yeah. Like, you know, don't stress yourself out either. That was a big thing for me is I stressed myself out. Yeah. About little things. And it's just, you know, it's going to go the way it's going to go. And you have to kind of... At that point, it really it. is. Yeah. You know, when the when the lights go awry or the things go awry... It's going to go, it's, you can't control it. No. You can't control what happens now. It's out of your control. No. The only thing you can control is what you've done up to that point yeah. with your actors. Exactly. Yeah. And so you just, you can control, like, you can be like, okay, they did what I told them to do. Or if they didn't do it, then it's like, well, okay, I guess they didn't take my advice. (laughs) Yeah, just patience as well. Like, a lot of patience, you know. Especially, like, just actually being the director and having to deal with the lights and stuff. It was such a different thing. Because I was the actor last year, and I was stressed out because we couldn't rehearse properly because of the lights. And then this point, this year, I was like... I totally understand how Fioka was feeling now. Yes, when so, everyone was like, can we do this? Can we do this? Yeah, like, nope. just patience is a big thing when you're directing. It's just, yeah. So Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm so gl- I was so glad to get uh, Mr. Fioka's email where he's like, oh, we got an award and everything. Yeah. The w- thing went well. And it's like, that's yes. the ending that you want, isn't it? It is. Of it your really experience. Is. And I was really proud of Carly, yeah. meaning, who got her award. I was very proud of her. Because she did do a great job. Yeah. And all. She was awesome. And she was perfect for the role. And she knew what she was doing. And I could see her going far. With, if she wanted to, yeah. she could do acting. And a lot of them can, really. But, yeah. You never know, we'll right? See. You never yeah, know. We'll see what you never know when your name's going to appear on the next uh, directing. Uh, yeah, maybe. Directing bill. Maybe. Or, or yeah. next time they won't confuse you for somebody else. Yeah. It'll be like, the no, no. Who it's, the play? Uh, no, no. Lindsay it's, play. Like, it's, it's not my name. Yeah. It's a <laughs> community all the way. All right, thank you so much. Yes, okay, you're welcome. Yeah. All right, thank you, Amelia. Uh, show notes, theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 134. Since we talked about a play, I think we should uh, hear a little bit about the play. It's a play feature, it's a play feature, it's time to feature a play. So the play that uh, Emilio directed and we were talking about is Censor Bleep. And Censor Bleep deals with uh, censorship, you know, to the point where the actual word is bleeped. And uh, the play takes place in a world where there is a group of students in a school who are basically um, the overseers of making sure that students are are happy and say nice things and never, never do anything which might cause a ruckus or uh, make waves. And when students try and do this, when they try to be individuals and speak out, well, bad things happen. So uh, here's a conversation between uh, the leader of uh, and the group of uh, girls. They're called the Bleep Bleep Girls. They're the ones who are overseeing the censorship, as it were, of the school and what happens when a a student reporter barges in and wants to know about changes that have been made to a a student newspaper article of his. All right, girls, we're on a deadline. We have to read all the editorials by Wednesday. I demand to see Mr. Shemlet. Hey, you can't push your way in here. Get out of my way, Barbie. That's not nice. Stop pushing. Now, now. There's no need for this behavior. It's simply not necessary. 
Are we not more civilized? The bleep bleep girls are calm in chaos. So true, girls. I want to talk to Mr. Shemlet about my article. I'm the editor. You can talk to me. Do you remember this article, Sandy? Oh, I do. It was really good. Oh, you should be proud of yourself. This is not my writing. This has been cut to shreds. Yes, it has. The quarterback was getting his homework done for him. We proved it, and we proved he was cheating, and everyone looked the other way. You made him look like a hero. Yes. Why? We fear riots. What? Graham is not just the quarterback. He's very popular. If you write about him in a poor light, that will make the other students feel sad. We can't have that. The bleep bleep girls promote goodwill and prevent ill will. This is not bad bleeping. It's the best possible kind. Don't you agree? This is censorship. You can't... Oh, bleep bleep! Such a harsh word. So unnecessary. I'm still going to talk to Mr. Shemlet. If there's anything we can do to help, let us know. I think the, the creepiest villains are the ones that are the sweetest and the nicest <laughs> and are, you know, in theory, the most civilized. I think those are the they're the funnest to write and I think the funnest to play. So that is Censor Bleep by me, Lindsay Price. And you can go to theaterfolk.com, read sample pages for free. You can also go to theaterfolk.com forward slash episode 134. I'm putting a link right there so that you can go to the page directly. Finally, where, oh, where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every Tuesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page and Twitter. You can find us on youtube.com forward slash theaterfolk, and you can find us on the Stitcher app. You can also subscribe to TFB on iTunes. All you have to do is search for the word theaterfolk, and that's where we're going to end. Take care, my friends. Take care. <laughs>